What is good YouTube, it is your boy Flex, and put your muscles up, cause we back with another video. So in today's video man, I bring to you the worst prison riots in British history man. This one's a long video, it's about an hour long, so we're gonna break this one up to, into sections, you feel me? So if this video gets 100 likes, I don't wanna waste nobody's time if you guys do not like the video, you feel me? If the video gets 100 likes, then we'll continue to do the rest of the parts, you feel me? So let's go ahead and cut out all the chit chat man. Get your headphones on, turn the volume up. That full experience, let's get to the video, let's watch it, let's go. 25 years ago, nearly 2,000 inmates broke out of their cells and took over Strangeways Ooh, Prison in Manchester. Two the world's media thousand. caught every moment of the rooftop siege. But what made Strangeways remarkable was that cameras had already like captured Hogwarts. the brutal conditions that existed inside the prison. A stark warning of what was to come. I tell you something, this place will go off, and when this place does go off, the roof will go, man. When this hidden world finally erupted, men died, and hundreds were injured. Now, for the first time, the riot leaders, the inmates who followed them, and the prison officers who fought them, take us inside Britain's toughest prison riot. Oh, that guy, man. Strange Ways. Strange Ways Prison, Manchester. And so into a barred and unnatural world of 900 male prisoners and 140 male officers. A world without money or women or liberty. I think it's funny the first thing they say is women. You've got to understand that the people who are training you probably joined the prison service just after the Second World War. And they were trained by people who joined just after the First World War. And they were probably trained by people who joined after the Boer War. So the standards that applied were the standards that applied 50, 60, 70, perhaps 100 years ago. What were those standards, Dave? Discipline. Simple as that. I mean, don't those standards still apply? The same as any other officer, especially young ones. Keep your mouth shut, listen, watch, and learn. Prison officers had to be there at 7 o'clock in the morning, not one minute past 7. If you didn't appear properly dressed, then you could be disciplined had a reputation along with Wandsworth as, as sort of being the last bastions of discipline in the service. Like it almost seems like they might be a little bit too focused on disciplining the officers and not the inmates. Strange Ways was Britain's largest jail. A dark star hidden behind vast Victorian walls in the heart of Manchester. The prison was designed on a Victorian design. If you were to look right down from the top of the rotunda, you would see the prison centre, which would be the hub of the wheel. Off that centre were the five wings, A, B, C, D and E. It's such a beautiful structure, though. would house all the inmates on four different landings. A1, A2, A3, A4. And exactly the same with B-wing, C-wing, D-wing, and E-wing. So you can stand on the centre of the prison and look down every wing and see everything that's going on. This is life in a local prison, as it actually happens today. In 1980, the hidden world of strange ways was revealed when a documentary team filmed life inside the prison. Call your name down. I want you to go down on the way to and stand outside each cell. It was a mammoth of a place. It was kind of Dickensian. 
for a young boy, you know, 15 and a half, 16 years of age, it, it was quite gruesome. Black slip on shoes, blue jacket, pinstripe. I was 20, you know, a small, young, young man. When you're a young offender, you go through the reception stuff. You're stripped and, you know, and the, you know, the, the, you know, they ask you to bend over and that and the exposure. Put your shirt right up for me. What's this scar for here? Stabbed. Eh? Or stabbed. Mm. I mean, I get they got a, that's part of their job, man, but I don't know, bro. That's a little too, too comfortable in that position. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Everything that was <laughs> It's just throwing that out there, man. It's frightening as well. It's frightening. It was known to the locals as the Big House. We are the only hotel in Manchester that is always a 100% full. I hope, I hope, it's off to where we go. The shovel and the big and the donkeys. I hope, I hope, I hope. I was very proud to work at Strange Ways. There's no tighter bunch than those people who work in an institution. I didn't and know that I was a real song. to be very satisfying. But Strange Ways was struggling to cope with the rising tide of prisoners coming through the gates. Built for 900 men, Strange Ways now housed one and a half thousand. That's your first Undoubtedly, problem. the pressures and tensions of imprisonment are increased when two or three men share this living space, a cell devised in the Victorian age for one man. And we had a previous governor who uh, once labelled it as um, a human warehouse. He's right, really. It was a human warehouse. Three inmates had to share the toilet facilities in a cell, which was a chamber pot. Like a plastic bucket, right? With a lid on, if you're lucky, where you shit and you piss, and it's in your cell with you. But it wasn't very nice if, you've, if you're wanting to defecate and your cellmate's, you know, in the cell and he has to experience the, sp the stench of that. It seems absolutely barbaric. Yes. But in those days, that was, that was normal. And you just accepted it and got on with it as a way of life. Prisoners were allowed just one hour's exercise a day. For the other 23 hours, the men were routinely locked back in their cells. Tension, anger, frustration. The added problem of overcrowding rising to alarming proportions has also increased the threat of insurrection. This is a Victorian prison in 1990 that's still acting and treating people like it's Victorian times. This place should be closed down because this nick is run by the screws. But I'll tell you something, this place will go off. And when this place does go off, the roof will go, man. Into this powder keg stepped an idealistic young governor, Brendan O'Friel. He had a reputation as a modernizer. The big issues were we had far too many prisoners and not enough cells, things for them to do. It makes people very depressed, very morose. It makes them very angry. Brendan O'Friel was a remarkable man, a man of deep convictions, of real spiritual experience, and a man who cared. The new governor was quick to spot the simmering tension that existed between prison officers and prisoners. You know, I was a bit of a bastard, to say the least, sometimes. You know, I was volatile, I'd explode. Do you know what I mean? And I was hard work for them and sometimes, which sometimes you, you didn't even have to do nothing. Say, like, there's 200 officers in strange ways. I'd say there's only 20 of them that were really bad. The others were all right, they were decent staff. They just went about the daily jobs, they didn't bother no one. But out of the sweater, the bad apples, they were a little firm. 
and they used to come around beating people up. And that's usually how it is too, man. It's not, it's not, and that's with like any organization, you know what I mean? There's, there's usually just a few bad, bad eggs in the batch, you know what I mean? And it's like, in, in their situation, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you obviously know there's, that there's tension, that there's no way not to know, you know what I mean? You got hundreds of people pretty much stacked on top of each other. And then when you're, when you're poking at these people and they're already, they're already done lost their minds, you know what I mean? It's like, what do you expect is going to happen? There was no abuse. Simple as that. No physical. And no verbal. It's hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, but, you know, some prison officers will have the courage to say what happens. Some won't. Prisoners on occasions can be extremely difficult, um, extremely objectionable, and staff are rightly, on occasions, very cautious about prisoners and sometimes get very cross about them. But O'Friel also discovered a culture amongst some prison officers that had no place in his prison. We had a club, a prison officers club, immediately outside the gate, which regrettably served uh, alcohol at lunchtime. You got, so you got, you got drunk officers patrolling your, your angry prisoners. I'm glad I'm in a whole new era, boy. I tell you, holy hell. It meant that in the afternoon, there was the danger that some staff would return to duty having been drinking. And this would have two effects. One is it would probably affect their judgment a bit, and certainly it would aggravate prisoners. Well, yeah, they used to use my fists at times, but when that wasn't working, because they used to have their batons and stuff like that, we used to have a piss pot, so we used to throw that over them full of piss and shit. And the new governor noticed that there were some prison officers who were openly racist. Some of the staff were wearing on their ties um, a little symbol um, that was regarded as racist. Mm, some of them used to have badges with like, uh, you know, you know, the gollywog off the jam jar on it and things like that. And you know, it was just like, what is this place? What did he say? Gollywog off the jam jar on it and things like that. And, Golly, you know, Gollywog like, off the jam jar? I instructed I have no clue what he said. all those symbols be removed. That sort of behavior would not be tolerated. Come all on. of the prison officers were male, a situation O'Friel soon remedied. I remember my first day at Strange Ways, and I was allocated B Wing, and I was just stunned at how many prisoners. See, that's in that situation right there. That's kind of scary, you know what I mean? For hunt for like a hundred years, you know what I mean, or more. You've had a prison full of men, and then all of a sudden you bring you bring a female into the situation. I wonder, I wonder how that integration process works, or or how it worked out. I guess you probably tell me. The word just unlocked at the same time. Marching down, so disciplined. It's illogical to have female staff looking after male prisoners. We, we certainly had bumps and bangs as we introduced um, uh, change like that. You always do. But overall, the, the, the effect was quite remarkable. If there was tension on the wing, if prisoners were going to fight, sometimes the females just being there calmed it down. Unlike previous governors, Brendan O'Friel made it his business to get to know prisoners. He was a little bit different. He'd openly chat to a prisoner. If a prisoner came to him and said something, he'd, he would actually chat to them on the sensor, which, as officers, we found a little bit strange, I must admit. I knew about Brendan O'Friel. I'd had a conversation with him on the sensor of Rotunda one day. Just by chance, he was passing, and I had engaged him in conversation. I was trying to persuade Paul that there were um, opportunities for him to go to work because he was a sentence prisoner. And um, I was trying to get all the sentence prisoners in the main prison doing some sort of activity for at least half a day. Paul Taylor 
was serving three years for checkbook fraud and handling stolen goods. Three years? I grew up in Birkenhead until the age of seven and a half, and my mother had a breakdown, and from the age of seven and a half, I was in care homes. He'd been in and out of prison since the age of 15. Now nearing the end of his sentence, Brendan O'Friel was keen to prepare Taylor for life outside. It's where I come to contemplate life. The rocks in Birkenhead Park. I like schooling, you know, um, the power of the written word. This is a rock I imagined when I'm sat on those rocks over there, that this is a lecture hall and that this is Aristotle or Plato or Socrates giving me a lecture. Welcome to Strange Ways, first of all. The governor of Strange Ways today admitted he'd initially been daunted by the arrival of prison inspectors, but his fears were largely unfounded. O'Friel's approach began to pay off. Strange Ways got a good report from the chief inspector of prisons. When it came out, I was extremely pleased because he did the two things I wanted. First of all, he praised what we had done so far, but he also pointed out we had a very long way to go and we we're in serious need of major capital investment. See, and I feel like this, this, like his ideology still should apply in today's prison and reform system. Like he just just a few few minutes we've had with him already, you can tell he is a, a compassionate guy. But I guarantee you, he still has a very strong sense of, of morale, and 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 you know he 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 probably really believes in if you do the crime, you should do the time. You know what I mean. But at the same time, you shouldn't be treated like an animal. You know what I mean. And I feel like I feel like that should be. All across, all across the prison system, all over the world, all over the world, you know. But of course, not not every not every country, not every place is, is fortunate enough to have uh, a decent prison system, you know. You know. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, end it right there, man. Like I said, about 15 minutes. I think I hit it right on the money. You know what I'm saying? If you guys like this, like this video. If it gets 100 likes, we'll do the we'll do the next part. So I know you guys can do it, but that last time I asked for a certain amount of likes, I mean, you guys, you guys completely crush it, man. So I know you guys can do it. You feel me? So you guys already know what to do, man. Like, comment, sub. And until next time, you guys, put your muscles up. I'm out of here. Peace.